We may note that I don't have a cat on my lap this morning. He's in the other room. He's on the phone with CPS, Cat Protection Services. Uh, there's a reason for that. We ran out of cat food in cans, and I had to open a can of human tuna, and that drives him out of his mind. <laughs> and he uh, he wants all of it. Chicken of the sea, crack for cats is what it is, basically. Anyway, it's great to see you. We're talking about time this week, and we just have very little idea, if any, the degree to which we are under, we are enslaved by time and space. This anchor that we carry around with us, in very rare cases, some, hum some humans have evolved up out of this thick, gooey medium of time and space, but they're exceedingly rare. But it does happen, and it will happen for all of us, and I'll explain that in a moment, so stay tuned. We humans think that we're so super extra evolved, you know, we do things that so many other animals can't do, and that's obviously true. And yet, it's in the advancement of our own brain, and the way that our brains can abstract in a way that no other animal's brains can. Coming along with that is the experience of time and space. Animals don't do that. When you drive out in the country and you drive by the cows, they're not constantly looking at their wristwatch and having reminders going off of the meetings coming up next week. They're just out there trusting the flowers will come up and having a damn good time, except for when humans bother them, probably. So we think we're so super advanced and we are in one respect. And yet this evolutionary stage that humans go through where we abstract and then we create this, we create this artificial lens of reality called time. And I've got very interesting news for you. Time and space is solely the function of the human mind. If you took human beings off this planet, which I do not recommend, although some people do, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we're a wonderful species. We're just having growing pains. But if there were no humans in this universe or species higher than us, then there is no time or space. There simply is none. There's no big clock running behind the universe. There's no sands of, there's no hourglass running out in this universe. We think, oh, 13, 7 billion years ago, the universe started and it's going to die a heat death in 13 billion more years. There's, there's no such thing as that. You take humans out of this universe, there's no time. So what does that mean in effect? Well, I said earlier that the time will come when we do escape time and space, and that'll come at the moment of our death. We humans, because we suffer from this abstraction of time, we rummage around in the past, all the things that didn't happen or happened to us. And then we imagine imaginary futures where, you know, it really boils down to one question, what's going to happen to me? And, oh my God, I hope it's going to be good. And, you know, thus the prison, the compression, the vice of time is constantly crushing us and pushing, pushing us out of this present moment. Now we all get blessed relief from that when we die because Death is the moment that we as eternal spiritual beings leave the realm of time and space and go back to where there's no experience of that. It's almost impossible for us to imagine what that experience of relief is. It's like the two dimensional ant living in a three dimensional world, trying to get a sense of what it's like to live in three dimensions. Read the science fiction story Flatland, parenthetically, he added. But we will escape time and space when we die. But today's message is, why wait? Why wait? Practice the presence today. There is no future. There's no such thing as, as the past. It's a weird echo that we have going on in our head. Now, is Greg saying, don't plan for your future? Just lay around like a cow in the grass and watch the lily spin around? I'm not saying that. People who escape the prison of space and time are the people who enjoy it the most. When we realize it's a strange, unusual game that we've constructed with our human minds, then we can play in the realm of time and space. And yet we're the ones who have the most fun because we don't feel the pressure of the past that happened to us 
or what might happen in the future. We're simply going moment to moment to moment. Life is a hundred million consecutive moments of now. Enjoy them. It's about time. I'll see you tomorrow.